You are listening to Stateside. I'm Cynthia Chanty. In addition to the human errors and the incompetence from the likes of the Snyder administration, the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, the EPA, and a series of unelected emergency managers, many have pointed fingers at another non-human culprit, the Flint River itself. But my next guest says, not so fast. Rebecca Fedor is the executive director of the Flint River Watershed Coalition and vice chair of the Flint River Corridor Alliance. Rebecca, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. So did the Flint River get an unfairly bad rap in all of this? It sure did, yes. We have a, a river that um, has suffered from a bad reputation for many, many years anyway. And when this crisis hit, we uh, saw a whole lot of blame at the local, state, and national level um, in the press and, and the experts saying that, uh, you know, that we have this toxic river and it was such a uh, folly of a decision to make that switch to using the Flint River. Um, but we know with the data that we collect over the years that uh, we have a fantastic river system. It is fully supporting of all aquatic life. And um, we were confident that the river could serve as a quality drinking water source. So, how, all, right, all right, somebody wants to <laughs> say amen. How did that narrative, you know, take hold and take over then? Um, again, I think it's the history that the river has. We have a, um, the river does not look that great as it flows through downtown Flint. Um, we have a, a industrial history of, um, and a legacy of pollution in the river, um, but that pretty much was addressed um, with the advent of the Clean Water Act. Um, so it just, but this, this, sure. Okay. Um, so we good? Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, that, that reputation just kind of stuck. And so it was really easy for people to grab onto that narrative and say um, that not only were there issues with the treatment and, and the agencies following up, but it was just a bad decision to switch to the river, which, um, Again, we know that wasn't, it may have been a bad decision because they weren't ready to treat river water, but the river was fully capable of, of serving as that source. And, and how does the health of the Flint River compare to other rivers around Michigan, especially those that are near big cities? Um, it's, it's comparable. Mm -hmm. So we know that, you know, urban rivers all face some of the same issues as far as stormwater runoff. Um, some, you know, the, the, uh, the urban and industrial legacy that a lot of our rivers face. Um, all rivers across the country have to deal with what's called non-point source pollution. Um, so it's, it's really comparable. We know there's a couple of hot spots in the river, um, one of them being right in downtown Flint that is about to be cleaned up. Um, but otherwise, we have just a fabulous river that flows through. It's 142 miles. It flows through five different counties. And it's just, uh, you don't have to go up north. No offense to our colleagues up north, but you know, you don't have to go up north for that wonderful river experience. You can have it right here. And I know you really want people to understand that they shouldn't base their impressions of the Flint River on that part that runs right through the right. city because it's so channelized. Right, it is. It was channelized by the Army Corps of Engineers. Explain what that means. Um, so instead of a free flowing river, we have a dam and uh, about a mile and a half stretch of the river that was put into a concrete channel. So in one big section of it, we have horizontal uh, concrete uh, walls going um, about 15 feet down. So um, it's really dangerous. If you happen to fall into the river, it's hard to get back out again. Um, and then it moves into what uh, was a former GM industrial site where, again, it's, it's channelized, but then we have more of a um, uh, of, a, of an angle on the banks where you can actually get in and out of the river, but still it's very, it's inaccessible, it's not attractive, and um, again, it proves a very large safety hazard to the residents. Tell us about the Flint Riverfront Restoration Plan. Yes. What are people going to see? Oh, this is fantastic. So we're going to be removing the Hamilton Dam right in downtown Flint, which is on U of M Flint campus, and then there'll be a series of drops and pools that are created so that people can have a fun um, experience going up and down the river in kayaks and tubes and stand up paddle boards. And then we're also gonna be softening the, the edges of the, of the river so that people can actually get to the river. It's a really interesting thing that we see in the springtime when we have the river come up as it does with all the spring rains that we have. Um, the river goes over those 15 foot banks at that point and people flock to it. It's just a, such an interesting thing to see. We know that people like to be able to get to the river to touch it and to interact with it and play and fish and everything else. And so this project is gonna make that um, possible year round and make it safe for everybody. And what's the timeline? Uh, the 
that's always a good question. [laughs] Um, the project has been turned over to the Genesee King Parks and Recreation Commission and they've been working so hard on um getting all the funding uh for that project as well as moving downstream into the Chevy Commons area. Um, so they're doing a really good job on that. I think they have all of the permitting for the removal of the dam there's just some additional permitting that needs to be happening. Um, the clean up of the, uh, consumer site just above the dam is gonna start any day now. Once that's done, they can start taking out the dam. And how is this related to the upcoming dredging project that's supposed to start next month? Right, yeah, so that's the consumer site. And um, that, like I said, they, they've already started clearing the banks of, of of vegetation so that they can get down to the river and that uh the actual work in the river is supposed to begin in the next week or so. And doesn't the need for such a, a major dredging project to clear up contamination and and warnings to expect foul odors, doesn't that suggest to to people that the river is unhealthy? I mean, I guess I'm, I'm wondering if warnings like that, can you blame people for feeling suspicious about the health of the river? Sure. And that, that, that is one of the hot spots that I mentioned earlier. And, but the thing that we know is, uh, the contamination is, is in the sediments and in the ground at that site. So it doesn't impact the health of the river downstream from there. Um, the problem is it's all of the sediments are being held up by the Hamilton dam, which, um, it's a really bad dam and so it needs to be cleaned up in case something happens to that dam so the sediments don't leak downstream. But it's all contained within about a block stretch of the river. If you, uh, Rebecca, could get people to see the Flint River and think about it as you do, what would that look like? What would come to mind? Oh, the Flint River is fantastic. Um, we have a stretch that you can go for about two and a half hours in a, in a kayak and you'll never even see a road. Um, it's, like I said, it's just like going up North. We have an abundant array of wildlife. We've got, um, eagles all over the place now. Um, uh, osprey, deer, ducks, everything that you could imagine, um, seen along the river. We have one of the best walleye fisheries in the state. Um, one of the best, uh, small mouth bass fisheries. So they're just, the recreational opportunities are abundant and it's just, it's, when we take people out on the river for the first time, I can win a bet every time to say that, uh, the first thing they're going to say when they come off the river is, I had no idea it was so beautiful. Well, you certainly share your passion for the river with, with, with great pride. Rebecca Feed of Wahoos, Flint River Watershed Coalition. Thank you so much for being with us. And we're going to take a look at Flint business through the eyes of Michigan radio's Steve Carmody coming up next.